be forced into a position of unequivocally supporting the actions of an Israeli government that include bigots who reject the idea of a Palestinian state. Israel is a democracy. Five months into this conflict, it is clear that Israelis need to take stock of the situation and ask, must we change course? At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. At a time when so many Israelis have lost their confidence in the vision and direction of their government. Hello, friends. Welcome to another edition of a sure word of prophecy sponsored by the three messengers television channel i'm your host glendon mcfarlane it's a pleasure friends to be with you today but before we say anything further let's go to, into a word of prayer it's always a very good thing to say a word of prayer before you delve into the word of god Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all your goodness to us, for showing us love, for loving us and providing for us uh, as always. Thank you for your continuous generosity to us, for your charity to us, for your love to us. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, for sustaining us, sparing our lives, providing a roof over our head while many are without out a roof in Gaza over their head. Many in Gaza, as we speak, do not have food to eat, clean water to drink, clothes, proper clo clean clothes on their bodies, Lord. They have no homes. They have lost many family members as much as 20 and 30 in each family. We have heard of numbers of losing a hundred of 80 members of one family. We pray, Lord, that you will be with them today. Lord, that you will be their advocate. That you will, Lord, visit them through the comforting power of your Holy Spirit. Speak to their hearts and minds. And most of all, provo provide an advocate in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ to them and give them liberty and justice. Lord, give them liberty and justice is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, say a special prayer today for the people of Palestine for the people of Gaza, in particular, the people of Gaza. For they are now going through an extermination, an ethnic cleansing, and we pray for them that whatever is now being pursued, especially in the city of Rafa, that you will intercede and that their cries, Lord, will not go unheard. The greatest book ever made, ever printed, ever written by hand by the great prophets of old is, the, is God's holy book, the Bible. I'm quoting now from Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. 
see that ye be not included, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. Even when you see these things are happening, you know that the end is near. But the end has not happened yet. It says in verse 7, For nations shall rise up against nations, and kingdom against kingdoms. And there shall be famines, there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquake in diverse places. So there shall be famines, according to verse 7, and pestilences, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So you see, friends, the wars... The pestilences, the earthquake in diverse places are just the beginning of sorrows. So there's more heartache, more pain, and more conflicts and pestilences to, to come. Are you ready to face them, my friends? Are you ready to face the great tribulation prophesied in the book of Revelation? Chapter 13, Revelation chapter 18, the phenomena of the Antichrist is also nearing upon us. The interference in our lives of a national Sunday law of religion through legislation Pushing religion through legislation. Because pushing religion through, through legislation is already happening to us. A lot of people believe that in order to bring back, to bring back a moral, a, a morality in, in this society is to do it through legislation, not through conversion. As the Lord spoke of in Matthew 28 verse 19 when he commanded us to go and preach the gospel to every nation, kindred and tongue, then he shall return. So there, there is no, you know, effort, you could say effort to preach the everlasting gospel. There is more effort to legislate the gospel. On others to legislate the gospel through the halls of Congress to legislate a day of worship to legislate behavior such as an abortion ban and all of those things is, is to do it through legislation nobody is I'm not speaking as an abortion advocate here I'm not speaking for or against abortion here. What I'm sp speaking of is the legislation of morality, of biblical tenets and beliefs through the halls of Congress. Religion and religious legislation instead of converting the hearts and minds of men through the nothing but the unfettered word of God, the truth, the everlasting gospel. Because in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, that commission was given to us Christians who believe to preach the everlasting gospel to the ends of the earth. But going back to Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to repeat Verse 7 and 8. For, starting from verse 6. And ye shall hear of, of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. 
and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated among all nations for my sake. So God's children who are called by his name for his sake shall be persecuted and shall be killed for his sake, according to Matthew 24 verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated among all nations for my sake. And they, then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and shall deceive many. And the iniquity, verse 12, the iniquity, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. There will be more hatred than love in each society, in the societies. There will be more hatred than love as the Spirit of God withdraws from men. As the Spirit of God, as, as men turn their backs on the pleadings of the Spirit of God, they shall become more violent, more evil, more hateful. So you see, my friend, There, there is no winners here except the children of God because the children of God are going to be re redeemed. The children of God are going to be rescued from the wrath of the devil and from the wrath of what is about to, to come upon the land. With all the commotion in our world today, some of us are lost in the commotion taking place in politics and which which have become very divisive politics have become very divisive racist segregationist and hateful the hateful speeches of politicians during their political campaign in order to impress their racist base there are some people that are looking for america to to remain a democracy some are looking for America to, to become a dictatorship, believe it or not. There's a, an unbelievable admiration nowadays for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. There is an unbelievable admiration for the atheist Vladimir Putin and people like the North Car Korean dictator King Kim Jong Un. You know, Kim. I'm sure. I hope that I'm pronouncing his 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 name properly. King Kim Jong Un, right? Doesn't matter anyway. Doesn't matter. The dictator of North Korea, Xi Jinping, the dictator of China. There's a a growing admiration for people who are dictators. There are, is a growing admiration for people who are antichrist, haters of, of truth, haters of religion, hater, hate, haters of true Christianity. Because in those societies, there's no room for Christ in those societies. In those societies, there is no freedom of religion. There is no freedom. There is no, no adult suffrage. No freedom to vote. Freedom of beliefs. Free and just courts of laws. Freedom of the press. There is no such things in those societies. Is America in danger of becoming a, a dictatorship? I believe so. I do believe that in order for prophecy to be fulfilled, 
America would have to become a dictatorship since the great prophecies of the book of Revelation for mostly have to be fulfilled in the United St through the United States of America first. There, though there are signs that I have seen where there are signs being fulfilled in in the through the European Union first. And as they are fulfilled in the European Union, they come west. But the most dramatic and vivid signs of the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of the Antichrist power to gain dominion in the West, it is first based on prophecy through the United States of America. And you can see what is being described as the state of the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 18 and what will occur. And also in Revelation chapter 13, in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, which speak of dictatorship and the killing of the children of God and the changing of times and laws. You know, we have seen all of that through God's holy book. The prophecies that goes through that. But the, I can see that there's a danger that that a dictatorship is coming quite soon within the United States of America. I've seen it. It will not be through the through, by guns, but it will. I believe it will come through the ballot box because you know we're looking at. We can look at the history of the Soviet Union, and after the Soviet Union fell. When President Gorbachev and President uh, Ronald Reagan spearheaded the doctrine uh, art and belief of perestroika within the Soviet Union, and within the early 90s when the Soviet Union fell, there were those in the Soviet Union that believed and regretted that the, the great Soviet empire had fallen till even after President Gorbachev had torn down the wall, had helped to tear down the wall in, Ber in Berlin, Germany, that divides Germany, East Germany, and West Germany. When President Gorbachev tore down those walls or orchestrated the tearing down of the Berlin Wall that separate East from West, that there were still those within the Soviet Union that wanted, the, that regretted that the great Soviet empire fell, the communist, em, foremost communist empire, the most powerful of communists, empires in the world at that time in the 1990s and when the walls came tumbling down there were, was resistance for the progress of democracy in within the soviet union the chairman of the russian parliament a guy by the name of ruslan kosmolatov organized a rebellion and tried to overthrow the presidency of Mikhail Gorbachev, which also brought an end to the reign of communism within the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union become a divided state. And that is in, that was based on prophecy, because that was based on the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, which prophesied that, that you know, the divided nations of, of Europe will remain divided as symbolized in the t ten toes of the great image of Daniel 2. You know, where it, the, the Soviet Union being a part of 
the you could say the old holy the old holy roman empire the great empire of rome the great empire of rome the divided great empire of rome being a part of it would never stand because the feet of that great image of Daniel chapter 2 symbolized that the empires of Europe will not cling together. They will be divided and have to share power as individual nations. So the fall of the Soviet empire was already predicted in the book of Daniel. And that great empire, no matter how Mr. Putin will try to bring it back, it will never happen. Mr. Putin will never be able to conquer and to subdue Ukraine at all based on prophecy. Because based on prophecy, the nations of Europe will remain divided until the stone is thrown from heaven. And that stone is symbolized in Christ who will come down and destroy the image, the image, the great image that symbolized these great empires. In the feet of this image in Daniel chapter 2, these kingdoms are broken up and divided and become small pieces and particles because the almighty kingdom of God will be the only kingdom that will be a united unitary kingdom united you could say standalone kingdom there will be no other kingdoms after the kingdoms of the world are overthrown by the kingdom of the almighty God the stone that came out of heaven and struck the image on his feet in Daniel chapter 2 symbolize the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who will come to reign in an everlasting kingdom on, the, on, on this earth. And then the earth is restored. You know, I've seen people expressing that America should become, that they want a, a patriarchal state, a patriarchal state in the United States of America where white men rules this great nation and all other nations, all other ethnic groups and races fall behind that kind of thing. And there are are people within the United States with that sort of belief. With the racist, it's racist theology and racist ideology combined. They want a mixture of church and state and is fighting for a mixture of church and state and they want a religious dictatorship, patriarchal dictatorship in America. And is fighting for that kind of dictatorship. And they, they have got their candidate lined up already. Which I will not comment on the personality, whoever that person is. But, but they have got their candidate lined up who, whom they believe will bring back America. Where, where white supremacy is at the forefront. Because that is what they believe. I, we have, the evidence is there. Because we have seen evidence of that. That it's there. But the book of Revelation, the word of God, through the book of Revelation, speaks of an everlasting kingdom. The Bible speaks of the new Jerusalem come in the book of Revelation, coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. So there is no room, there is no room for any eternal dictatorship here on earth. And that America will become a dictatorship where some guy rules over other races based on racist preferences and differences. 
the only scenario in which that is going to take place is the within the rule of the Antichrist. That's the only means and way in which that is going to occur. But, you know, some people are, America will be run by white men in white page in a white patriarchy is what they want and what they believe and that's their desire and all other races will be submissive to such a government the question is are you looking for such a government are you expecting such a government to rule america because if the far right wing racist elements in this country are allowed to succeed then it means America will be, will truly and eventually become a dictatorship. But I believe that America, through prophecy, will become more of a religious dictatorship than a, a political di dictatorship, but it will be a dictatorship of church and state combined. Because for that to happen, when you look in the book of Revelation chapter 13, it said that, entire world wandered after the beast the whole world wandered after the beast which is happening now because the world through the world council of churches is becoming one united ecumenical movement has become one united ecumenical movement even though there are a few churches denominations such as the seventh day adventist church that has not become a part of that one world religion which has not become a part of the world council of churches but denominations and uh, you could say a dictatorship a religious dictatorship is guaranteed because it has to happen for the phenomena of the mark of the beast, for the phenomena of a national Sunday law, a legislated day of worship. The prophecy fulf being fulfilled in Daniel chapter 7, and verse 25, which states, He shall wear out the saints of God, and he will think to change times and laws. That power, that great power, He's got to be fulfilled before such a dictatorship can really be instituted, be, 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 be developed, be formed, become a reality and be effective. Such the fulfillment of prophecy will have to take place. Read it. Read the entire chapter of Daniel, particularly Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, and you'll get a fairer understanding of the kingdoms of the world that have passed. And the kingdom, the divided kingdom of the last day that will be reunited to form an image to the beast of Rome. An institution which resembles the Holy Roman Empire, the persecuting power of the papacy in Rome. That power will be reinstituted again, will be reformed again. So, you know, wars and rumors of wars and the war in Israel between the Israeli Amas war. Hamas war and the war in Russia are vivid signs because you know both, when you look at both wars both wars has the potential to escalate in 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 a bloody world war which will put the lives of millions of people at risk with the present arsenals the arsenals of France which is a nuclear power, Great Britain, which is also a nuclear power, the United States, and Russia, having the most nuclear weapons. 
you know, Britain and France have their own nuclear arsenal that can be launched from submarines. You know, so we are in a situation now, now where the world is more, you could say, poised for a nuclear explosion more than any other time in his history. We are within that time. You know, but if Christ do not come, shut, he said, I'll cut short the days for his elect's sake. He will cut short the days. If Christ does not cut short the days, man will destroy this world and destroy each other, completely obliterate each other. If Christ do not return in a timely manner, in a timely fashion, but he cannot return until the everlasting gospel is preached to all the world. You know, the, the religious right of pure extreme, the America will be run by the extremes. That is what they are hoping. Are you expecting such a government to rule America? Because if the far right wing racist elements have the power or if they succeed, then it means America will be, in fact become a dictatorship. Can America be, become a dictatorship? Of course. America can become a dictatorship by the will of the people, by the, the vote of the people. Can you vote in a dictator? Of course you can. There are many leaders of the world that have been elected, then become dictators. Many leaders, which I will not go into too deep into that kind of politics right now. But you can go back into history and look. I mean, Adolf Hitler was elected. He didn't just become overthrow the government of Germany and become a dictator. He was elected. He was a populous, popular leader, as some of the dictators are, aspiring dictators are today, if you know what I mean. Because people who entertain dictators and admire and show their love and admiration for dictators are potential dictators themselves. Can a dictator be elected? Of course a dictator can be elected through the ballot box, through, democ being, through being a democratic nation, a dictator can truly be elected. Russia, for example, in the first instant, Vladimir Putin was elected in a, in a, in a free election, but Vladimir Putin as by evidence, become a dictator today. So you see, my friends, all is being geared up now for dictatorship, but all is being geared up now for a battle. But the battle is more spiritual battle than physical battle. It will be a physical battle in some cases when the children of God are being persecuted but it will more than anything be a battle against the powers of darkness, the powers of evil. It will be more of a battle against them. Is a dictatorship needed to be fulfilled for the Antichrist to, become, to come to religious and political power? In the last days, in the United States of America, of course, I just said that. I believe so. I believe it's important to, you know, to look at what took place this week, where the Senate Majority Leader of the U.S. Senate, Chuck Schumer, today condemned Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu of prolonging the war in Gaza in order to maintain political power and to remain in office. Prime Minister Netanyahu has been investigated, was being investigated, and 
prosecuted for corruption before the war began. You know, so it is believed by world leaders, including Senator Schumer, that Mr. Netanyahu is prolonging that war. In other words, he's shedding blood in order to save his skin, basically. Because when the war ends, then his reign would be over. And then there would be a resumption of prosecuting him for crimes that they believe he had committed before the war began. So this man is shedding blood as a means of remaining in office. You know, Chuck Schumer seemed to have been stroking an atmosphere of dissatisfaction and political division that is now taking place in Israel of this unpopular prime minister. That's basically what Mr. Chuck Schumer had been doing this week. I have said from the beginning of this war that Netanyahu is committing a genocide in Gaza to appease the far-right racist elements within his government and the racist factions led by Minister of National Security. The Minister of National Security, Itamar Ben-Gavir. So, Itamar Ben-Gavir, the Minister of National Security of Israel, is a well-known far-right very extreme right-wing racist in Israel who wants the death of as much Palestinian and, and is not ashamed to say so because he has said so in many instances. Yet, yet they made him to be National Security Minister of that country. A well-known racist who hates Another ethnic group, group in your population is now responsible for the police force. What do you think he's gonna do if he becomes if he comes into a position of power? What do you think he would do if he hates a cer certain sector of the society? If he hates Palestinians, for example, which he does, what do you think Itamar Ben Gvir is gonna do? since he ate that sector of population, you know. I've said from the beginning that, you know, the war of the war that Netanyahu is committing a genocide in Gaza, and this was to appease the right-wing elements in his society, you know. And uh, he's national security minister, even though he's he, he was an avowed racist and well-known racist. And, you know, he, he has formed a coalition government with Mr. Netanyahu. And um, Mr. Netanyahu would not have been able to remain prime minister if he did not form this coalition with this well-known racist. So I'd like you to listen to what some of what Senator Schumer had to say. Please watch. ...of a viability, viable Palestinian state. Saudi Arabia and other Arab nations should continue. The outlines of a deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel that were reported before October 7th still make a great deal of sense and can be the catalyst for the creation of a viability, viable Palestinian state. Saudi Arabia and other Arab nations should continue to pursue normalization with Israel. And this should be the foundation of a grand bargain in the Middle East that will finally make meaningful Palestinian statehood a reality. For our part, the United States, the world superpower, must work together with our allies to bring our immense diplomatic and financial power to bear on this situation. We can be a partner to, the grand, to a grand bargain in the Middle East by deepening our relationship with the Saudis and other Arab nations to induce them to make a deal. 
but only if they actively guide Palestinians to a more peaceful future. On the Israeli side, the U.S. government should demand that Israel conduct itself with a future two-state solution in mind. We should not be forced into a position of unequivocally supporting the actions of an Israeli government that include bigots who reject the idea of a Palestinian state. Israel is a democracy. Five months into this conflict, it is clear that Israelis need to take stock of the situation and ask, must we change course? At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. At a time when so many Israelis have lost their confidence in the vision and direction of their government. I also believe a majority of the Israeli public will recognize the need for change. And I believe that holding a new election, once the war starts to wind down, would give Israelis an opportunity to express their vision for the post-war future. Of course, the United States cannot dictate the outcome of an, ele of an election, nor should we try. That is for the Israeli public to decide, a public that I believe understands better than anybody that Israel cannot hope to succeed as a pariah opposed by the rest of the world. As a democracy, Israel has the right to choose its own leaders, and we should let the chips fall where they may. But the important thing is that Israelis are given a choice. There needs to be a fresh debate about the future of Israel after October 7th. In my opinion, that is best accomplished by holding an election. You know, and he is not interested in a two-state solution. When he talks to Joseph Biden or any emissary or ambassadors of the United States going to Israel or when even President Biden visits Israel, face to face he will say he will pretend to want a solution but when he is among the local military leaders and and leaders within the, the, the domestic politics of Israel he says something else he says something else he has no desire whatsoever to end this war anytime soon because he wants to stay in office and this is about saving his skin, his political skin. The Palestinians, both in Gaza and the West Bank, you know, as to have a self-government and the big, the edges, or you could say the fences that prevents Palestinians from leaving their country. Whether in the north or the south, those barriers are to be removed if they are to become free citizens. But, you know, what? if you look at a map of Gaza, you will see what comes comprise Gaza, a distance of 25 miles to north and south, from north to south, with a width about five miles wide. That is Gaza, a small enclave, you know. And the other side of Israel is the west, is the, is you know, Palestine, you know, on the West Bank. A people cannot really be free when they, they are cordoned off in their countries like concentration camps where they cannot leave one way or the other, north or south, and they are not free. How can you be a nation if you are not free to leave your own country? If another country shuts out what you get to eat and determines what you eat and what your diet is going to be and prevent vital medicine and aid to come in to your country but uses a situation an unfortunate situation that occurred recently where Hamas invaded and killed innocent Israeli Israelis 1200 innocent is Really, which deservedly is to be condemned. 
But in a situation like this, where a government uses that as an excuse to exterminate, instead of going to the enemy to exterminate the enemy, what you do is to exterminate the people from where they from, that are that are surrounding that enemy. You exterminate the because you see that enemy is not among your population. So you don't give a care care one way or the other. You don't care if the people of that population are killed. You don't care in the process. You do not care if the people within that population is killed. You do not care. You know, we have to be fair in our affairs in this world. As people of God. As people of God, we, for instance, I, as a man, I am wary of taking political sides nowadays. What I look at is people, and I believe that all people, all people are God's, are the same. We are created by God and no race is better than any other. No race is better than any other, right? No race is better than any other race. Whether you be Jew or Gentile, according to the Bible, whether you're bond or free, whether you're a slave or not, whether you're, you're a servant, or whether you're a free servant or you're an enslaved servant, you're still valuable to God. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, you're still valuable to God. Whether you're yellow, black, and white, you're still valuable to the Lord. Your soul is valuable. We have become the children of God when we accept the Lord. In John chapter 3, God tells us, Jesus tells us the requirements. The requirements of being saved is to be baptized of the water and of the spirit. The good book also says if you are in Christ, if you are, if, if you are baptized, if you are in Christ, then you are of Abraham's seed in John chapter 3. And you are here according to the promise. The promise that God made to, to Abraham, just as God made to the Jews. And, and I want you to read John chapter 3, the, the book of John chapter 3. Whether Jew or Gentile, whether bond or free. You know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. Because there's the, God's chosen people are the people that are saved through grace and are saved in Jesus Christ through baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's God's people. Right? That's God's people. Just as our God's commandments are for all of us. God's love and salvation is for all of us. There's no Jew nor Gentile. No, there's no bond or free. But we're all in the family of God. That is what I believe and that is the Christianity that I preach. So therefore, the preaching of a particular race of people as a particular color of people are the chosen few or the chosen people is not biblical at all. Through the prophet Moses, God took the children of Israel through the desert and rescued them from the pharaohs of Egypt who had enslaved them. And he brought them to the promised land. He brought them to Israel. Jesus was sent and the, 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 to, the, to the world to save the world. For men to have this sacrificial lamb. The true lamb that, was, that came to be slain. But what did the scribes and Pharisees do? What did the Jewish leaders do? 
They turned their backs on him. They even tried to kill him. And then they conspired with the Romans to slaughter him when he came. But by his death, by his death, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we're all free from sin and can be free from sin and can be free from the condemnation that the law has placed on our backs by disobedience to the law. But when the law shows of us our sin, we go to Christ and we ask for forgiveness or we are baptized. We are baptized and are saved through grace. So the people that God is coming back for, the people who will enter that great new Jerusalem, the people who have, are the people who have overcome the great tribulation and the people who are baptized and are saved through his blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Those are the people who will inherit the kingdom of God. We are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to share in the historical events that have occurred in the past and those that are occurring now, the wars and rumors of wars. And we pray, Lord, that you will intervene in our world very soon, but give us the power. Lord, give us the power to preach the everlasting gospel, to preach the everlasting gospel that everyone should hear before your coming, that everyone should hear before you return to this world. We thank you, Lord, for this great gospel that is given us through your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we thank you that we are able to feast today on your holy words, that we will realize that it doesn't matter our color, our creed, our race, our ancestry, that we need to be saved. We need to accept you in our hearts as our Lord and Savior from sin in order to be saved. There is no special people anymore except your people. For if ye are in Christ, we are of Abraham's seed, and we have inherited your promise. Thank you very much, Lord, for this great opportunity to speak on the, your holy words is my prayer. Through Jesus Christ, bless those who listen and those who subscribe to this great channel who has grown over a year now. Thank you so much, Lord, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, friends, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today and to share the good news. The good news, the everlasting gospel, the word of God with you today. Thank you very much. And let us tune in again for another edition of a sure word of prophecy in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Until next time, see you soon and God bless you all. Amen.